Good morning and uh, welcome to our service of Holy Communion. <clears throat> In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Our gathering prayer, eternal God and Father, we thirst for your love and long for your presence. Come, Lord, and refresh us with the water of life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We say together our confession. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our Lord and God. Amen. <clears throat> Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon your sins and set you free from them, 
confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And as a thanksgiving we say together the Gloria and we will say the choruses just once. Glory be to God in heaven, peace on earth to all mankind. Father, heavenly King, Creator, God of power undefined. Praise and honour, thanks we offer. Worship you with heart and mind. Jesus Christ, our Saviour, only Son of God, by faith we know. Lamb of God, the world's Redeemer, love and mercy to us show. Seated at the Father's right hand, intercede for us below. You alone, O Lord, are holy. Jesus Christ, you are most high. With the Father and the Spirit, Trinity to you we cry. Alleluia, alleluia. You, O God, we glorify. Now, collect. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, this day after ascension, and we thank you, Father, for your love for us. So we thank you, Father, that your spirit in faith is with us as we celebrate this Holy Communion. Amen. <clears throat> Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to Christ our Saviour. John chapter 17, verses 6 to 19. <clears throat> I have revealed to you, I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours, you gave them to me and they have obeyed your word. Now they know everything you have given me comes from you. For I gave them the word you gave me and they accepted them. They know with certainty that I came from you and they believed that you sent me. Pray for them. I pray for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. All I have is yours and all you have is mine, and glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them and kept them safe by the name you gave me. None has been lost except the one doomed to destruction, so that the scripture will be fulfilled. I am coming to you now, but I say these things while I am still in the world, so that they may have the full measure of my joy within them. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, for they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but, you, that, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth of your word. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them I sanctify myself, that they too may be truly sanctified. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. <coughs> our Gospel lesson this morning is part of the high priestly prayer that Jesus prayed the night before he died. He prayed this part of his prayer for the disciples, especially verses 9 to 11. In these verses, Jesus is praying for the unity of the disciples to one another and their unity with the Father. This text fits well into the church year. We've just celebrated the Ascension of Jesus on Thursday and we'll be celebrating Pentecost next week, the so-called birthday of the church. So it's fitting that we have this text on this Sunday where Jesus is praying for the church, the disciples and our unity together. The main theme that runs through the early part of Jesus' prayer is unity of spirit and unity of body. Jesus is praying for the unity of the disciples to each other and unity to his teaching 
as well as unity to him and the Father. In other words, Jesus is praying for the unity of the church, which will grow out of the lives and witnesses of these disciples. There is a definite obligation for us as followers of Christ to uphold, to pull together, to encourage, to console, to be there for one another with comfort, to cheer and love as we bind ourselves together in this community of Christ, which we call the church. And each part of the church is important. Each member of each church congregation is important as the church unites itself together for its one common purpose, to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. There's, there's the little story of the kite which illustrates this need to be united in purpose. The question was asked, who flew the kite? I did, said the sticks. No, I did, said the paper. No, I did, said the wind. No, I did, said the boy. The truth is, they all flew the kite together and if any one of them had failed to do their job, the kite would not have flown. If the sticks had broken or the paper torn, the wind dropped or the boy let go of the string, the kite would have fallen to the earth. We are all uniquely important. We can never be successful as the body of Christ unless we are united. Division in any organisation is destructive. Jesus knew it. He was accused of driving out demons by the power of Satan. And his reply was, every kingdom divided against itself will be ruined and every city or household divided against itself will not stand. He could also have said, any church divided against itself will not stand. So if anyone comes to church with thoughts of division rather than unity, it's time to take a long, hard look at why we're here. You're not asked to like every member of the congregation. But you are commanded to love them and want the best for them. The difference between, that there is a difference between liking and loving. Each of us has our own special part to play. If the work of the church, God's work, is to be successful, we, we have to work together as a community in visiting, giving, preaching, and countless other jobs to make the church and its work successful. We must all work together and each do what we can. All those years ago in the garden, Jesus prayed for the unity of the church in his day and age, as he prayed for the unity of the disciples to each other and to him and the Father. And it's this same unity, it's in this same unity that, that we find meaning and we find purpose in life today. And in that purpose of life, there's a togetherness as we, as we live our Christian lives. We, we are together as the church. We are together with Christ and we're together with the Holy Spirit. And it's in this togetherness that we draw strength for our daily Christian journey. Most people have heard of the giant redwood trees in, in the United States. <clears throat> and many of those grow over... 200 feet high and, so, and, and I believe one over 300 feet and some of these giants were growing I'm told when Christ walked the earth but what you may not know is that these trees have the shallowest root system of any tree and yet nothing seems to move them and the reason for this is that their roots reach out horizontally for great distances and become intertwined with each other they literally create a platform that holds each other up. Now, if we, who are followers of Christ, are to reach our full potential, we need the support of each other. Not to be over-dependent, but interdependent. The main thing is that none of us can stand alone. Our roots need to be as strong as our journey through this life. Our roots need to be strong in Christ. And they need to be strong in each other. We, we need to reach out to each other to secure our faith. And as we go, grow, grow stronger together, we grow stronger in our individual life of faith. And as our faith grows stronger, we can reach out to others. And we can help others to mature their faith. Not only as individuals, 
but the church as a whole needs to reach out to other churches and dare I say it other faiths too <clears throat> Dietrich Bonhoeffer in his book life together talks about my faith helping your faith to grow and the fact that it can only happen if we share our faith stories with each other I need to hear your faith story and um, I need to hear your faith stories during the good times as well as the bad I need to hear your faith as I hear your faith story my faith story also grows and then I can share it with you or someone else we each of us we each have a faith story a testimony if you like and we need to share that story of our salvation with each other in the community of faith the church like any other organization can only be as strong as each individual member of it if i'm strong in my faith the church as a whole is is, is stronger if my faith is weak then the church as a whole has a weaker faith so it's important to be like those redwood trees spreading out our roots to each other in support so that our faith will grow stronger and stronger when you realize the upheaval and the attacks that it's been through during its history it's absolutely amazing how the church has grown and survived all these years somehow christians including all of us working together have made the christian church grow and prosper how many earthquakes have there been in modern times we've seen massive destruction the, the latest big one i think was in uh, new zealand but we've seen massive destruction where many very old buildings were destroyed and if the truth were told many of those buildings may have been poorly constructed not constructed um, in, 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 in the knowledge of the fact that there were very bad earthquakes yet if you look in the jungles of Peru there are huge structures built by the Incas where the stones have been perfectly cut and fitted that they have so perfectly cut and fitted that they've survived even the worst earthquakes and it's God's plan to build his church in the same way the people of Christ are pictured as a building with each person in a block in that building um, 1 Peter 2 verse 5 says you also like living stones are built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood people with a variety of backgrounds, abilities, interests and needs make up Christ's church. So uniting us in a common purpose is never going to be an easy process. However, if we let the Lord do his work among us, shaping us and assigning our place in the structure, we become part of a strong, solid, unshakable construction. And that shaping takes a bit of time. But as we rub up against other living stones, you know, the roughness wears away and we become a truly close fit, like the Inca buildings, needing no mortar to glue us together. It's true that we are all different. And yet, instead of being a disadvantage, perhaps this is part of our strength. It's very difficult to build anything interesting with blocks of the same size and shape. You end up with a Lego type building. Some of the rural dry stone walls uh, in, in, in the countryside are, are, owe their beauty to the fact that each stone is a different shape and size, yet they fit together and support the whole. So it's, it's, with, it, it's with that imagination and determination we differently shape stones can be fitted together to build something truly magnificent we call that magnificent building the church <coughs> jesus prayed i pray for them i'm not praying for the world but for those you have given me for they are yours all i have is yours and all you have is mine and glory has come to me through them i will remain in the world no longer but they are still in the world and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. Amen.
Let's say together the creed. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. <coughs> Let us pray. We pray for the church throughout the world. Heavenly Father, have your hand on all church leaders in places of conflict and especially places where your gospel of love is unwelcome. Give them the gift of wisdom as they navigate a course for their congregation and as they share the love of Christ. We pray for the growing churches in Africa and in the Pacific, for the training of leaders and, and for spiritual maturity. Lord, in your mercy, hear us. We pray for the needs of the world. Father, we know that we are each responsible for the decline of the environment. Help us to curb our overconsumption of resources for the waste we produce, especially plastic and the food and other raw materials that we waste. Give us a respect for the beauty and the wonder of the world entrusted to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear us. We pray for our families and friends. Father, we are blessed with those who have to put up with us in all our different moods. For the friends who have stayed with us and grown with us throughout the years. And we pray especially for those faraway friends we only stay in contact with through Christmas cards and the like. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for the sick. Father, we who have good health are so blessed and are a contrast to those who have debilitating illnesses. We ask for healing and for courage as we place them in your hands. We especially ask for your hand to be on the population of India at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we also pray for the situation in Palestine. We ask your Heavenly Father that the, the, the two warring factions there may put down their arms, may find a settlement. And we pray, Father, for the future of that area, that both Jew and Arab will come together and find a new way to deal with each other rather than fighting. Lord, in your mercy, hear us. <coughs> we remember those who have died and especially those whose life has been cut short by Covid in this country and around the world. Thank you for those who when they were with us gave us love, encouragement and guidance. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. And we share the peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Shalom. We move now to our Eucharistic prayer. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Father, you made the world and you love your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you with saints and angels praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you. 
gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. <clears throat> so, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and the cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when his kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. We say together the prayer our Lord Jesus Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us peace. This is the table not of the church, but of the Lord. It is made ready for those who love him and want to love him more. So come, those who have much faith and those who have little. It is Jesus himself who invites you. It is his will that those who seek him should find him. body of Christ. The blood of Christ. Let me say our prayer after communion. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies as a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. May our eyes be fixed on the glory of the risen Lord. And maybe we tr may we be transformed by him and his resurrection. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst us and remain with us always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. We hope to see you all again next Sunday. God bless.